I remember the first time I ever played Tetris. It was on the black and white Game Boy. My friend had had a Game Boy, but I didn't. But he let me play it a lot, and I did not want to give it back to him. That game was so addicting. As the years went on, I played Tetris on a lot of other systems, like I'm sure many of you have. After a while, it just kind of got stale. They kind of kept releasing Tetris again and again and again on various systems. And then they had a bunch of variations of Tetris puzzle games with Tetris in the name. Sometimes they had some things in common with the original game and sometimes they didn't. There's been all kinds of Tetris games. The next Tetris, 3D Tetris, Super Tetris, V Tetris, Tetris Blast, Tetris Attack, Tetris Party, Tetris Pop, Tetris Giant, Tetris Battle, Tetris Friends, Tetris Axes, Tetris Stars, Tetris Blitz, Tetris the Grand Master, Kids Tetris, the new Tetris, Sega Tetris, Tetris Worlds, Pokemon Pokemon Tetris, Billy Madison Tetris, Tetris Advance, Tetris Elements, Tetris Mania, Tetris DS, Tetris Zone, Tetris Splash, Welchris, Hattris, Tetris Junior, Tetris S, Tetris Plus, Tetris Spear, Tetris DX, Puyo Puyo Tetris, Tetris 99, Tetris Effect, Tetris Battle Fusion, Tetris Ultimate. That's, that's about it. So I haven't played all of those Tetris games and I'm pretty sure no one on earth has, but I've tried many of the different variations and I never found them to be as fun as the original. It seems like it hasn't evolved, but there's one Tetris game that I accidentally read about recently. The description of it intrigued me and that was called Magical Tetris Challenge. And I have the N64 version here. And you'll notice it's made by Capcom. This game was actually controversial when it came out because Capcom had held off supporting the N64. And then the rumors started uh, circulating during the N64 days that Capcom was developing a game for the N64 and everyone was losing their minds. They're like, what can it be? Could it be a Street Fighter game for the N64? No, they put their efforts into a Tetris game. I think a lot of people dismissed it, but there are things about this game that are different that I think take the formula further than the original formula of Tetris. And I think this game is the best Tetris game out of all the ones I've played anyway. I will say that in the game footage, you will see a little bit of glitching because of a filter I was using in OBS. But anyway, the first thing you'll notice is that they got the Disney license. There's characters from the Mickey Mouse universe. I don't know much about Disney and uh, this is not a part of the game that attracts me to it. But it does show that they were marketing this game to the younger crowd, which I'm not sure was a good strategy. Let me get right to the heart of the matter. If you've played any Tetris at all, you should recognize these blocks I have on the screen. These are pretty much the same blocks that have been in Tetris games since the first game. If you had a game just called Tetris, it had these seven blocks. But Magical Tetris has more than that. It has these, and this one, and this one, and all of these. You also get this one and this one, and this one, and this one. And also look, it has a straight block that's made out of five blocks. The fact that the game has all these shapes in it just changes the dynamic of the game. At first, this game plays a lot like the regular Tetris, but once somebody starts getting some of the lines completed, it starts sending stuff over to the other side. And the things that drop are the more complicated blocks. If you do have one of those unusual blocks hanging above you and you get two or more lines completed, it's called a counter and it sends blocks to the other side. The first counter sends back a two by two block. And if that person counters it back, it turns into a three by three. And then if they counter it back, it turns into a four by four. And then finally, the last person to counter will send over a five by five block. After that, they can't counter it anymore. These blocks are deadly if you get several of them in a row, you might as well just reset the game because you are dead. 
This all happens very fast, so if this seems too complicated, don't worry about it because normally when you're playing the game, you're only thinking about the block that you have in hand and you just want to find a place for it. The bottom line is, if you start doing good, you start dropping stuff on the other side and you hopefully win the battle. Another thing that's new to this game that I haven't seen in other Tetris games is this meter. When that meter fills up, this rainbow comes and sweeps away like half the board. And it also condenses the blocks and leaves this gap in them, which sets you up to get a Tetris. There's times when things build up on the board and it gets really stressful and you just know you're going to die because you can't keep up with what's coming down. But sometimes when it's filled up like that, you'll hit the top of that meter and you'll just breathe this sigh of relief and it just changes the whole flow of the game. Of course, it's not as fun when it happens to the opponent, but that's the way it goes. The manual also says this, for every minute you play the game, Game, the magical level is increased by four blocks. The higher the level, the more obstacle blocks and counter blocks are sent to your opponent when you clear a line. So basically, there's an escalation to the gameplay that's built into it that forces somebody to die eventually. I think this is to keep the battles from becoming too long, which can happen in these types of games. But I think that's a really cool feature. I did notice that late in the game, there was a ton of weird blocks falling in a row, one after the other, and sometimes it was enough to just end my game within like 15 seconds. <laughs> Now, when you do get the weird challenging blocks, there can be miracles that happen. You may have a good place to put them. You need to get out of the mindset that you have for the older Tetris games. Sometimes you want to have a really flat area just in case somebody sends over one of those 4x4 four four blocks or whatever. Now I mentioned there's that long block that has 5 blocks in a row. I'm sure there's many of you who are intrigued by that. Does that mean you can get something above a Tetris? You can and it's called a Pinterest. And when you get one, it is awesome. And it heavily penalizes the opponent. I did end up beating the story mode. There's other modes as well, including some that keep on going and they don't have an ending. But for the most part, those modes are seen in other Tetris games, so I'm not going to spend any more time talking about them. Now, I will say that my favorite puzzle game of all time is actually Dr. Mario, specifically the version that's on the N64. Me and my wife play this all the time. I just love the concentration needed to get rid of all the viruses, but Magical Tetris Challenge has solidified the second spot of my list of favorite puzzle games. Now, it could be that I'm smoking something and that this game is not as good as I think it is. When it came out, the reviews were pretty positive, but nobody was calling it the best puzzle game ever. So take this video as a grain of salt. There may also be other Tetris games that do some of these same things that I'm describing about this one. I just haven't seen them personally. I wouldn't be surprised if you point out some similar ones in the comments. So let me know if you have played Magical Tetris Challenge. It's actually pretty cheap out there at this time. It's also on the Game Boy Color, but they changed a lot of things with it. This was also released on the PS1 in Europe as well. It never came to America. I hope you enjoyed this video. On the screen in front of you is a link to another video that YouTube thinks you would like to watch. So feel free to click that and uh, follow me on Twitter. Have a good day, everybody.